Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to Rhinestone Island. And today's episode, I decided to try something a bit different. I decided to totally go against what I was planning on doing this episode, which uh, originally was going to be just detailing this uh, first part of the small town and uh, maybe holding off on the expansion until we had some more details put in and we had everything looking the way I wanted it to. But uh, what happened instead was something that I, I really ended up doing kind of on a whim, but I'm really happy that I did it. Uh, and that is expanding this little dock here that is just as of now, I guess, like a single dock that accepts cruise ships and international ships and all that stuff and turning it into a full size marina that, you know, has all these boats and little personal boats and things because we don't have any marinas on this entire island, which I think is kind of weird. So we're going to make this entire tip of the island sort of into a big marina, at least on the outside anyway. Uh, so... Uh, for this episode, though, it's not going to be a whole lot of detailing. It's going to be actually majority uh, infrastructure work, putting some roads down, fixing the way uh, some of our neighborhoods are laid out, and uh, reshaping a bit of this part of the island for the marina. Now, before we actually get started on the detailing of the marina, and you're seeing now some uh, reworking of the roads and stuff, uh, we will be going in and fixing our highway connection and basically just making everything here, uh, I guess, friendly to the, the new levels of traffic we're getting. So the thing about putting one of these big cruise ship dock things in is it kind of acts like a passenger train connection of some sort where you're getting a whole bunch of new uh, people from out of town coming in. And on top of that, this town's growing, and that little interchange we made last episode that I said was pretty temporary was definitely not cutting it. So what we're going to do instead is work on something that uh, I think I think this is a pretty interesting little, uh, I guess, interchange is the right word for this. Um, let me know what you think down below about the final result of this, but uh, I thought it was pretty cool. So uh, it, it initially started with the idea of making... Well, I wanted to have sort of a roundabout underneath the uh, interchange. And what I realized is because of, you know, obviously we need to have a cross or something narrow in the middle so we can have roads go over top of it. So I thought, why not make this sort of figure eight pattern that's a one way street? And then we would have essentially a roundabout, um, but it's uh, it's all one, you know, it's all one way, obviously, but it's, it's kind of compact and it can fit underneath the highway. Uh, now, the problem with this, and I'm sure you're probably realizing this right now, or maybe maybe you're thinking like, this is weird. Um, the, the only issue with this is that uh, one side of that roundabout is going in the opposite direction, if that makes so the crossing. So uh, the outside right now is uh, going, I guess that would be counterclockwise, or they're going clockwise. They're going the opposite direction with the way they should be going. So uh, it'd be really confusing if you were actually driving on this roundabout because you would be driving in the opposite direction and uh, you'd be turning off in the opposite direction when you're on one of the other sides. So uh, I think from here, after I realized that that was kind of strange, I liked the way that it looked. I thought it was a really cool concept to have this like figure eight looking interchange here. Um, but I think it was just a little bit too odd to have uh, have some traffic going in the opposite direction. So uh, I ended up going back and removing the uh, second half of that little loop and just turning them into two on and off ramps. So I'm sure I'll show it later on. I'll definitely show it after the time lapse and you can see the final result. But um, I think it turned out pretty good. I'm pretty happy with the way that turned out. And now it's 100% one way streets and uh, there's no lights anymore, no traffic lights. So all the traffic can just flow into the one way street, go in this little like loop thing and then uh, exit onto the street with no no intersections, no traffic lights, none of that stuff. So anyway, we're on to the marina now. And uh, this is actually my first time doing anything like this before. Uh, I've never tried to make a big marina like this. I've done some like industrial cargo docks and things, as you guys know, but I've really never tried to do a, uh, a marina dock or a marina style uh, complex. So uh, I started off with some road connections here and the idea was to maybe use some of these like roadside uh, barricade things that I'm putting down like in the back here. And, uh, and these would look kind of good, I guess, as the very back wall of the marina. But uh, from then on out, I think I use quite a bit of those sea walls instead. And they look pretty good. They're pretty, uh, 
easy to place and everything. They're actually really flexible, so you can put them inside each other and it's pretty easy to uh, make them all look connected and all that stuff. Um, but the main thing that I ran into, and I'm sure we're gonna see this later on in this time lapse, is uh, it's really, really hard to place those default, um, I guess they're parks? I don't know, those like, those little water. Like you're, I'm, I'm moving right now, as you can see. Uh, the uh, the docks and the fishing docks and whatever, all those new things that got added whenever they added the canals. They're really, really hard to place, and I, I never noticed this because I never actually used them. But it really actually kind of surprised me. Like I, I really can't imagine anybody who like was testing these things and and trying to put them in the game, thinking like, yeah, this is a totally reasonable, you know, way to make this work. Like it, whenever you put down the boat marina, for example, or the it's called a boat marina. It's like a little tiny. Uh, Marina, I guess is the word, but it's like a little, little two little board blocks and then there's some boats sitting underneath. But the thing is, it's so impossible to get this thing anywhere near the water whenever you place it. Like it always wants to ride way up on the land. And and when you try and sink it lower, it just says no, no connection. I'm, I'm going to put it right now. You can see me trying to do this. I literally spent, I'm not even joking, like an hour trying to put that thing down. Um, I'm sure I'm going to cut out pretty much all the footage of me trying to put it down because it took literally forever. But you can see how high up that uh, those little walkways are compared to the boats. I think I just removed it right now. I'll probably put it back later on. But um, the walkways get elevated so much, but the boats are always going to be sitting in the water. So it just looks totally ridiculous. Like you'd never have the walkways that much higher than the boats. You can't even get in the boats from there. So um, I, I, I tried playing around with it after because I was really curious then, like, in what situation would this ever, like, work nicely? And, uh, and I really could not find a way to put those down and, um, have it look realistic. So, I don't know. I don't know what's up with that. I don't really know why uh, they're so hard to place, but I ended up just kind of not using it and uh, instead using these custom boardwalks that I got. Um, these are actually modular extensions of what are supposed to be these, like, rural uh, docks, but I just thought they looked so good here, and they, they really just fit everything, so I went with them and put them just here instead. Um, and uh, we're going to go in with some boats after and make it all look nice, but uh, you'd be surprised, actually, how little there are of custom boat assets on the workshop. I kind of imagine there'd be a lot, but there's only really one good boat pack that I could find. It's, uh, of course, it's Bloody Penguin. Uh, he's got this really awesome pack of just the vanilla boats, actually. They're all, uh, I think they were props that were added whenever the, uh, I guess, I guess it was whenever the, uh, the, all those, like, water elements came into the game. So the, uh, the canals and all that stuff, once they added that, they added these, boats and things as well that only get used in those those assets that got added as vanilla assets so he made this pack that basically makes all of them available as little parks and you just place them down um they're really interesting how they work because you you place them underwater you can see them actually right now oh, probably can't anymore but they were in the canal there um but uh you, you place them down like little parks underwater and then the boats themselves actually float and bob in the water, which is really cool because the other boat assets that I found don't do that. They're just like sitting there static and you have to have the water level like exactly right or else the boats look like they're floating out of the water and it looks terrible. So I'm kind of curious if it's easy to make assets like that. I'd imagine it's not, um, but it'd be really cool if there were some uh, some people out there who who understood how to make assets that float like this because I don't know how easy it is. I would imagine it's actually not very easy, but um, anyway, they look great. These uh, these vanilla boats look awesome. So huge shout out to Bloody Penguin again, like always. I mean, he makes such awesome mods and assets, but uh, this one really did make the marina look good. I mean, without these boats, it would look really ridiculous. So huge thanks. Um, and then I tried to make these, you know, all sort of sit in ways that made sense. You know, I've got some like houseboats and some yachts along the bigger dock and then the smaller ones have like these big you know parking they look like parking lots just like full of little boats and uh when i was looking at the marinas in like pictures it seemed like there was literally not a single space on any of the docks that was empty like it was almost entirely full so i tried to fill these up pretty good which i think is realistic i don't know um i don't have the uh, prop or not the prop on tree anarchy i don't have the uh, no pillars mod, so 
I can't clip these parks through uh, what I guess is the hitbox for the second half of these docks. So there's some empty space, you know, here and there. But I tried to fill it up as much as possible. We're going to have some boats sort of floating outside and everything too. But this is pretty much the fullest extent of our detailing for this episode. I just want to get the boats in there and play around with them a little bit and kind of get used to how they work. Um, they're also in my collection now, so if you if you go to the description down below, click on the little collection link, you can see uh, the boat pack by Bloody Penguin. But this is the extent that I go to, uh, this episode anyway, for the marina. We'll come back next time and we'll actually detail the rest of it. But I wanted to get the, uh, the boats in the water, get a feel for what it was going to look like, and then sort of start fixing some other things, which I think are coming up pretty soon here. But... This is when I realized that our single road infrastructure was not going to work. You can see I'm going to start, um, well, I think before that, I actually going to put some parking down because I need to put uh, some parking lots. Because again, this is like a, a really big marina now. It's got like a full, like personal boat sort of section. And we've also got this big dock where like cruise ships come in. So it's a really, really big complex. So I figured we should have some parking of some sort. And, uh, and that's where the parking comes in. But... Uh, it's around the same time that I realized that our current road infrastructure was just not going to work um, because I really didn't realize how, because I don't use those little cruise ship docks very often, but they really do bring in a lot more traffic than you'd imagine. And it's almost like, well, it's exactly like having a, a passenger, a passenger train uh, connection, I guess. So all these people are coming in and there wasn't enough room for uh, all the cars on the road. They were just like all lining up on these turns and it, it wasn't like the end of the world, but I knew it was only gonna get worse. You can see it right now, like kind of starting to fill up, but I knew it was only gonna get worse. And uh, that's why I decided to throw down a, a train connection. Now I was planning on doing this regardless at some point, but I didn't really plan on having it over here. And uh, you can see that I'm gonna play around with this a little bit and try and get a good spot for this to all fit in. Um, it's sort of a weird looking station to begin with, but it's actually my, it's definitely my favorite one that I have of all of them, the elevated, uh, modern looking train station, but we're going to use this one and then, uh, we're going to have to feed it in through this town. Now I didn't, this is supposed to be a small town, so I didn't want to have the train line just go like straight through the town. So I tried to have it stick around the outside by the marina and then it's going to sort of dip out of the town around the outside by the ocean and then go all the way down, down the highway. And then from there, I just put some like temporary roads that uh, that move out and uh, or temporary uh, rail lines that move out and connect to the existing line. So we're going to eventually come back, obviously, and uh, we'll add some more stops as we continue to fill out the second half of the island. But I needed to get one connection in just so that we could have people using this train line because I was noticing a lot of the traffic, probably like 80% of the traffic that was coming out of this boat uh, connection here was immediately going to the highway and then going straight to Rhinestone City. And it really makes no sense to have all that traffic going to Rhinestone City when we could just have a train that brings them there. So uh, that was my solution. And I think I'm going to cut out the majority of the uh, actual train line placing. Uh, so you might see a little bit here in a bit, but um, I did want to go back and sort of get started on these neighborhoods. I actually did this almost exclusively because because I really just wanted to see uh, or get a feel for the levels of traffic we were going to have as we started to expand. So I wanted to go ahead and, and zone some stuff and see what it was going to look like and everything. Uh, so that's why I'm doing all this right now. But uh, I think we're going to handle it just fine. Um, once I got this train line going, it was surprisingly... Uh, it was surprisingly pretty effective. Like the train line immediately got a lot of passengers on it. And it was only one stop going from here all the way down to that Rhinestone, Rhinestone Central, I think is what it was called, that, that main uh, terminal down there. So overall, it's pretty effective. But uh, I want to jump back now out of a time lapse, go to a live portion here and talk a bit about the infrastructure, talk a bit about the plans for the future. I know there's a whole bunch of stuff I want to do regarding the golf course and the other neighborhoods and stuff but i think next episode's really going to be the episode where we stop we don't expand a whole lot more and we really focus on detailing what we already have here now so this whole area looks nice and finished before we move on to the next parts of the island all right so uh, welcome back this is the uh, the start the baseline of our marina now uh, i actually just spent the last oh, man i want to say like hour and a half maybe almost two hours um replacing every single 
surface painter texture that I ever put in this map. Uh, for some reason, you might have noticed this in like the last few uh, parts of that time lapse, but uh, at one point when I loaded this save, every single little spot where I'd use the surface painter tool like this, um, all over the city, so all the way back in in uh, in uh, the, the like Fibonacci Park and the uh, Luxaway Bay and Rhinestone International Airport. This is especially was a really annoying to fix because uh, there was just so much concrete everywhere. But all that stuff was missing, and uh, I saved over it, so it was just gone. There was no way to get it back. Um, it must have been like a bug with the with the mod or something. I have no idea what caused it, but regardless, I kind of just recognize there's no way to fix it without doing it by hand and I went back and did all of it so so it's all back again but it was kinda nice I gotta go back and uh, and explore all the things we worked on I totally forgot about how much we used it over here in uh, in the casino city for all these little pathways and things so you know oop, I just noticed I missed a spot over here uh, so I'm hoping I didn't miss too many spots like this that would be kind of a bummer if uh, there was too much missing um, but I think for the most part, I did a pretty good job of not missing any spots. But uh, again, it, we'll see. I might come back and hit things uh, occasionally, but uh, it's all fixed now. Um, anyway, back to back to the new area over here. So like I said in the episode, um, this is totally just the infrastructure. This is the baseline for our future build. So uh, of course, we're going to come back next episode, and that'll be the core of creating this marina and making it look good. Uh, I really want to make this inner area over here feel like a big park. There's going to be some tents and activities and barbecues going on, all that fun stuff. Because as you can see, it's actually like a really lively area right now. You can see everybody's uh, walking to and from the train station over here. Uh, quite a bit of traffic actually coming from the train station here to our town. And it seems to be cutting the traffic coming from the highway pretty significantly. So that's pretty awesome. Uh, but all in all, I kind of knew we were going to need to have one of these train stations here eventually because this uh, this this new like cruise ship dock thing is pulling in quite a few people. And uh, as it was, we couldn't handle the traffic on this single road. So it seems to be better now. Um, and I'm liking the way that everybody's kind of interacting with this thing. They're either walking to downtown or walking over here to the cruise ship or vice versa, you know, this way. Um, but we're going to eventually have like a big park over here. We're going to have some concrete that goes off in this direction so people can actually walk from the uh, the train station here over to the uh, the main part of downtown. But uh, one more thing I want to cover is I also uh, wanted to show off this new interchange because I know I mentioned in the time lapse I was going to show it off at the end. So uh, this is the sort of half infinity loop interchange. Um, as you can see, if we did have this thing fully closed here, uh, that's what I was talking about when I was saying that uh, this one here is going the proper direction. It's going clockwise, so it you know it makes sense for uh, right-hand traffic to be you know turning right and then going uh, in a clockwise direction. But you wouldn't ever get counterclockwise roundabouts uh, in in a right-hand traffic scenario. So it really was confusing, to say the least, to have a, uh, a loop on this side. It meant that if you were exiting here, you had to actually turn left to merge onto the uh, sort of, I guess, impromptu uh, roundabout, if you want to call it that. Um, so it didn't make a whole lot of sense. And as much as it worked in the game, it just kind of bothered me that it was so wonky and weird. So for now, anyway, I decided to cut it short and just have these be uh, entrance and exit points to our little half loop here. Um, and uh, I think that's okay for now. If we ever need to have more traffic going out in this direction, then I'll probably revisit this little interchange. But for now, it's doing what I wanted it to, which is removing the intersection we used to have over here. Because it used to be a uh, avenue that went down here, and then when these roads met here, there was an intersection here, and there was an intersection over here with traffic lights. And that meant that all the traffic coming out, which is like a constant stream, and all the traffic coming in, which is also almost a constant stream, uh, was just having to stop and alternate. It was making these big backups and everything. So this is a much better solution. It means that everybody can just freely flow in and out of the highway, which is how I wanted it to be. So uh, that's the uh, that's the new interchange there. But aside from that, what I want to do, and again, because this, this whole thing is so unfinished, uh, next episode, I want to start out by visiting this area over here, kind of getting this commercial zone figured out. We're going to be putting some more concrete down. Uh, detailing these little schools over here, having some, you know, playground equipment and stuff and some parking lots and everything. And then 
working our way out from there we'll move on to the rest of the town and then the goal will be to finish the marina next episode so uh, that includes all the interior stuff and just detailing the rest of it so anyway that's the episode i hope you guys enjoyed um i apologize if i feel a bit like disconnected from uh the time lapse and from now i i just spent a long time fixing all that stuff and i uh, sort of lost track of what was going on, but I hope I covered everything that I wanted to cover. Uh, next time, like, like I said, we'll come back and be detailing and stuff, and it'll be lots of fun. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed, and as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.